We're just back in the Gill Wood and there's a, a big split in that oak tree there. Didn't know if it's the squirrels, jackdaws, owls. There's no bird flying around not near it, so not really sure what it is. We're just coming, we've just walked up through the, the gill wood from the line where all the kites in that one nesting and you can see the stream down the bottom there. This path takes you to up towards the bottom end of Highfield, like Pipe Bridge area. And <clears throat> like where the, the estate is in Highfield. They've got a bridge across the street. Ah, they built a the canny, canny bridge there, no? They used, we used to have to go and like stream jump on there years ago. 30 years ago there used to be a big oak tree where had fell across the stream, we used to use that as the... Bridge. Try and cross all this, huh? There's always a challenge with you getting wet. This place has changed quite a lot. It's because of the red kite trails and stuff like that, isn't it? All these conservationists coming in. They've done a good thing, really, but it doesn't look as natural. They put a path up through there. You can see it guns. It winds up through the fir trees because that was that was always a challenge to get up there. There's the original path there. And but now they've got it gone all the way through there. And that takes you up onto the the gill line. You can see the rooftops of the houses up in between there. There's a strong smell of garlic that was standing. And oh. this would be all this uh, ransoms. You can oh, actually right. admit it's you can smell that strong garlic smell. It's oh. got like a garlic white spring onion sort of smell. Mm. And you can smell it, it's really strong. You get it on all the lines, didn't you? Uh, the old railway line right. bank sides for some reason. Like in all them type of damp woods. Dark. What you did it is like it's like garlic, spring onion. This like a nice little steppy stone bridge thing. See if I can cross over here without getting wet. Hey, aye. Didn't want to speak too soon. And there's the, the remains of the old stairs that used to go up there. And that was a bit of a bit of a hike if you're old, but you know. They've made it easier by putting this path all the way around, twisting up through the trees. <coughs> and they've done the same up here, made this much easier because it was, you would be sliding down here, the, the path was like that, down there. That's how you had to cross over and come up. It was just a bit of a challenge. But now it looks alright. Just at the top of the gill line here. This path takes you down to Rollins Gill. And this is the old little bridge here. That takes you up in the high field, bottom end of the estate. You can see it's all nice woodland. Just up there is the old grass track we used to call it. We used to go and camping in there with my kids all the time every year. But doing here, that takes you straight down to Rollins Gill. Just in front of where that. It's hard to see it. I'm doing enough. I'm zooming in on the right place. But there is a little quartz here. You didn't see many of them in the woods here. They just take a little miniature cross between a grey tit and a blue tit, aren't they? I'm hoping I'm on the right place. Them nests lower down in small holes and trees, sometimes in the bank side, even on the side of a path in the ground, like in an old mouse hole or a, just marred places like that.
we're doing the back of the estate wood. <coughs> There's a lot of good old bank sides up here and stuff like that. See the houses up there. Rubbish dumps, people just tie the rubbish doing the backs of the gardens. Up there you've got the old fields. And this path takes you up in the high field wood above the estate. Well, it's relatively quiet in here. There's that little quartet again, it's just right in front of us. Nice to see that and other things. You didn't really see them much. You, you do see them a lot when you come into the right type of wood. But like I say, the, the nest right down on the bank sides, even in that type of bank side, you would find them just there under the tree or in an old mouse hole or something like that, or a small hole at the bottom, base of the tree. You wouldn't find them like the blue tits and grey tits up the trees. Just a few, yeah, again, this was all fields. It's still a field now, but the farmer did have horses in it and either cows, stuff like that, to graze, and it was all fenced off properly. But as you can see, it just hasn't used it much these days and Once you stop putting the cattle in here, or livestock, it just went wild. All the trees are starting to claim the land back. Small shrubs. This used to be, it was all oak originally. But as you can see, that there's a lot of fir trees being planted in there. The forestry cleared it. You can see in the distance, part of chopper wood. And that's what I get. It, they did clear it for the old mines years ago. And it's just all been replanted when fir trees. They cleared all that old oak. It was a proper old oak wood. About 40, 50 years ago, maybe more. They've got a road going down into there for the forestry. It doesn't get used as much now. The same when chopper wood, it's just like woodland management centre these days. I don't know what they do it for. We don't need the wood as much as what what they are planting them for. You'd think when they cut oak doing they would replace them with the oak. But they haven't. And it's made a mess of the woods. Pine trees, it's I suppose it's good that they put pine some type of tree back in, but It's not as natural as the old oak. You can see all the old oak in there, that's it's all the oak in there. And it was the same across the yard, but they, they cut it all down and put them in. Useless pine trees. Up in the distance there, I don't know if you can see it at the top. The, it's what I get school. And they did make that series, the kids film series. They put the wheel walks, I forget what they call the thing now. You can see the estate houses on the estate across there. And I'm gonna back into the wood here. The woodland. <coughs> you get a lot of people camping up, camping up here and sitting drinking, someone's had a barbecue. A few cans. That pathway takes you down the woods as well. <coughs> but I've just walked through all of that wood. 
and there's not as much wildlife as what there should be. You can hear a lot of birds, but I've seen one grey squirrel. And there used to be loads of rabbits and other small... There was a pond at the bottom that was full of frogs and toads and that, but there's just not there now. Compared to what they used to be. I'm just in the pine woods again, where I've just walked into. And as you can see in that tree there, quite a large hole in it. It looks a bit too big for a great spotted woodpecker. I'm not so sure that's going to be a green woodpecker. We're going to tell the birds we're going to come back one, like when we've got more time one day and just hang around in the wood, see if we can hear it or see it. So it would be quite a shy bird, the green woodpecker. Up north, where we are, they are. They're not as common as what they are down south, or the Midlands, of the UK. So we're going to come back and see if we can catch the bird hanging around here, anyway. Because it, it looks fresh, all the chippings around the hole, but it's huge. It's definitely much bigger than the Great Spotted. There's a few old bits of dead farm trees in here and it's ideal for the woodpeckers. It's a good wood for sparrowhawks as well. We've come across a quite a few old sparrowhawks nests in here. You can hear a chopping singing up there in the distance. Grey tits doing the bottom. I've just heard a blue tit up here as well. That's right behind us. But it's a nice little place. Here's another tree just there. But I think that's the one what the, the woodpecker has been using in the past. It's all rotten now and dropping to bits. The back half of the tree's gone. I was just looking at it a few minutes ago. <coughs> but it seems to be using this one now. That's quite a good find if it is a green woodpecker. There's a nice bird to see. We've got loads of places in here where we can actually hide and keep an eye out for it. And I can just sit up there somewhere and watch the hole. there on the side of that birch. A bit hard to see but it is a, a black cap. Let's just jump up behind the birch there now. It's a little bit tricky to see it. Got some around in the back of my neck. I'll walk around a little bit see if I can see the you can hear a chattering. I can still see it. That little bent branch there. But that's a a black cap, they come over here in the summer. It's like right like the late spring to summer and it's late spring now. You don't see many of them throughout the winter. They're a low nesting bird. Remember the warbler family again. Just there. Uh, yeah, it's flying away. But as you can see, it's a little willow wobbler. Trying to see if I can get a good clear shot of it. It's moving around that quick between the branches.
directly in front of the sun now, I cannot see it. But they would nest on the bank sides just like this. Or on the side of the path. They build a little dome shaped nest out of grass. Line up on feathers. I'm on the Derwent Walk at the moment. It's um, the, the route from Roland's Gill to Swarwell. And you, you get a lot of wildlife on the side of the paths down here. 